wakes you up pretty, uh, pretty quickly. <laughs> Professor Art McDonald's wake-up call before dawn from the Nobel Prize Committee led to a day of answering congratulatory messages. McDonald, pleased to meet you. You, you, you look familiar. <laughs> and sitting down for a marathon of media interviews. Arthur B. McDonald. About that wake-up call, at first he thought it was a hoax, until a Nobel Committee member came on the line and remembered what McDonald told him last year about a retired Swedish hockey player. I told him that uh, uh, when I saw the Leafs game on Saturday night, I really wished that Matt Sundin was still playing. <laughs> then I knew this was the real committee, no question about it. <laughs> McDonald's prize is for discoveries he and his team made here at a facility called Snow Lab in a sprawling Sudbury mine two kilometers deep. The mine's protection from cosmic radiation makes it the best place to study neutrinos, tiny particles that pour out of the sun in the billions bombarding Earth. Scientists couldn't figure out why two-thirds of the sun's neutrinos didn't seem to reach their detectors on Earth. McDonald's team discovered those neutrinos were arriving, just changing along the way. We had the accuracy to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that uh, neutrinos uh, changed from one type to the other, meaning that they have mass. And there was really a feeling of, uh, uh, of eureka associated with that moment. That discovery happened 13 years ago. It's part of what led to a fundamental change in the way scientists look at the universe. In his book, The Neutrino Hunters, York University physics professor Ray Jayawardana points out just how important McDonald's discovery was. It was a, a, a truly Nobel worth discovery that they uh, were part of, that they led two teams to make, uh, and also one that has opened up, not only solved a 30-year mystery about the missing solar neutrinos, but opened up whole new avenues of exciting research going into the future. McDonald says he hasn't had a chance to think about what to do with his half of the $1.3 million in prize money, just that he plans to put it to good use. Ron Charles, CBC News, Kingston, Ontario.